Hi everyone, this is Colin with Print Your Mind 3D, and today I want to share some useful tools and resources around generating supports in Ultimaker Cura 3.5 or newer. So a couple things before we get started. First thing is you need to make sure that you have Ultimaker Cura 3.5 or newer. So if you head over to ultimaker.com, you can go to their Cura, download the latest version, and again, as long as it's three, version 3.5 or newer, you'll be good to go. The next thing is you need to make sure that you actually have a model in your build area. And then the last thing is we're going to actually download a new plugin that was released. And the way that we do that is we come up here, Toolbox, and we go to Browse Packages. And if you scroll down, there's one here called Custom Supports. So if you select that custom supports, you're going to select install. So I've already have this installed, but if you're just installing it now, you'd select install. And then once you install it, it's going to ask you to restart Cura, and then you can jump in right where we are now. So once you have Ultimaker Cura 3.5 or newer, you have a model in your build area, and you've downloaded the custom supports plugin, you're ready to get started here. So a couple of things I'm going to go over today to help around supports. The first thing is actually a feature which has been built into Cura, Ultimaker Cura for quite some time. And that is being able to generate, a, uh, generate supports according to a custom overhang angle that you choose. So I actually just have an overhang angle test here that I found on Thingiverse. And it's got a couple different uh, angles here. So 80, 70, 60, and 45 degrees. So below that particular point, that is a 70 degree angle, 60 degree angle, 45 degree angle. So let's say I have a model which has two different angles. One is 50 degrees and then the remaining is 90 degrees. And I don't want support to go under that 50 degree. I only want it to be under the steeper angles. So what we can do is tell Cura to only generate supports if an angle on a model exceeds a given angle. And a good rule of thumb for most printers is about 45 to 50 degrees, any angle exceeding that, you want to generate supports. Now, different materials, different printers will certainly be able to have steeper overhangs, but that's just a good rule of thumb. So in order to adjust the supports according to the angle, what we're going to do is under print setup, you want to go into custom, and then you're going to come down to support. And if you click this little gear, it gives you the option to adjust more options that than what are currently showing. So we click that gear. Now I could either uh, scroll down and uh, actually find this, but I'm just going to type overhang angle, support overhang angle. And as long as I check that, you'll see it's now appeared down here. So essentially this angle, anything that exceeds the angle in here, it's going to build in support. So if I have, for example, let's just start at 45 degrees, it's going to build in anything from 45 degrees back. So if I now slice this and I go into the layer view, it's going to build in supports from that 45 degrees and back. So you can see 45 degrees and back. Now let's say I only want it to be under the 70 degrees and above. So let's say I adjust this to 70. Let's slice that again. You'll see that now this area here will no longer have supports underneath it. It's only going to be the steeper section here of 70 degrees or above where it's going to generate supports. All right, so that is using the support overhang angle. And again, it can be a very useful tool depending on uh, the model you're working with. So a couple other tools I want to show you now. One is the actually support blocker. So if you actually don't want supports in a specific area, you can tell Cura to actually block generating supports there. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to come over. So first you select your model. Now you select this support blocker over here. And now we're just going to select on the model where we want to block any supports. So I'm just going to go underneath it, underneath the model here, and just build a row 
of support blockers. So now, if I go in and I slice this, you'll see that that row will now no longer have supports generated there. Okay, so you can see now we have this section. Oh, and if I, let's just change this to 45. This will make it a lot more clear, this section here where the support has been blocked. There, so now you can actually see that. You can see this section right along here where it's actually been blocked and it's no longer generating support. So in that sense, you, if you have a very specific area on your model where you do not want support to be generated, you can use these the support blocker functions um, to be able to block that support. And the other thing is, you can actually adjust these the same way you can adjust your model. So if you wanted to scale this, um, make it wider in a given uh, given axes, you can do that right in the model. It actually treats it as if it is a new model. So it makes it, you can really customize those different support blockers uh, because it essentially treats it as if it is a new model. Now the last thing I want to show you is a new function, a new tool, that plugin that we installed, which allows you to build custom supports. So this is actually similar to the functionality you get in something like Simplify 3D, where you can actually build in custom supports only in a specific area that you want. Now the first thing you need to do if you are doing this is take off the generate support function because we're actually going to build this in ourselves. So we want to take off that support and now what we're going to do is come over to this custom support section and select where we want that to be. So this is going to be very similar to the other, uh, the support blocker, where this is now its own, whoops, sorry. This is now its own uh, model. So we can actually adjust this to scale. So we obviously want, whoops. Let's just revert that back to where we want it. I grabbed the wrong model. So here, if we want this to actually reach the ground, which we obviously do, we can simply make that taller. And then we just need to move it so that it's actually going to touch the build surface. Now this is one thing, if you actually move this below the build platform, it will lift up the model. So you need to make sure that you're not lifting your model off the build surface and that both the support and your model are actually making contact with your build surface. All right, so then once we have this new piece of support generated, it also needs to interact with the model. If you don't have a point of interaction, um, it's not going to generate that support. So you need to make sure that the custom support that you've built is actually touching the model that you want it to support. Now, I obviously want this to cover the entirety of this model. So I'm just gonna make it wider. We can move it underneath. So now, oh, I just move that guy so it's right underneath. There we go. So now if I slice the model, it is only going to generate support in that specific area where I have added the support manually. And there you go. You can see the support is only there and nowhere else on the model. So those are a couple ways to help you guys customize and use the tools around um, the supports in Ultimaker Cura. So for all of your 3D printing needs, head over to printyourmind3d.ca.